I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about, is it hopeless? What is the possibility that my ex will ever come back? Okay. A lot of times we often feel like our situation is completely hopeless. hopeless. And because you're filled mm. with such an overwhelming amount of anxiety and fear, it really clouds your judgment. The other thing that you guys don't understand is that breakups are very different than what you would expect or understand because I see breakups all day every day. Right. I've lived them. I know what it's like and I know that these things often go very differently than what you would expect. Right. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is is that you often feel like your situation is done, your ex is never going to reach out. It's truly hopeless. And I think after you've wrestled for it for a while, you get exhausted and just say, I can't do this anymore. So you kind of go hopeless. Yes. There's nothing more I can do. Yes. And I can tell you that many times your breakup feels absolutely hopeless. It looks hopeless, mm -hmm. but it's not. Because the trajectory of a breakup is not what you would expect. It doesn't continue along the same path in many times. Right. Right? So your ex can feel one way today, but two months from now, it could be completely different. different. They could look at the relationship and revisit Absolutely. what really happened. They could look at their mistakes. They can look at your mistakes, and, and maybe they just really start to miss you. So you can't expect the trajectory to stay the same. Right. So, there are too many variables. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I'm telling you guys, don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on the personal growth because you feel it's hopeless. One of the things that I know is a mistake because I see it all the time and I try and warn you is that you think your ex is gone for good. It's truly hopeless. And then you stop watching the videos. You give up on personal growth. Next thing you know, a month later, your ex contacts you, you've forgotten just about everything, and boom, you blow it. Yeah. And that does happen a lot more yes, it does. than you guys would really want to know. So, continue the personal growth. Regardless if your ex comes back or not, it's going to do you good in the long in run. In the long run, it will make you a better person. You can't go wrong with sticking to the personal growth. Right. You owe it to yourself, right? Uh-huh. Absolutely. So, very rarely do I think it is truly, truly, truly hopeless. Right. There's only one case where I could say, without a shadow of a doubt, it's completely hopeless. You want to know what that is, Margaret? Did we do it today? No. What case is it? If someone dies. That's the only <laughs> time it's hopeless. Right. As long as somebody's alive, thinking and making decisions, you just never know. <laughs> That's right. So if they die... But that is pretty pretty definitive. I would say yes. it's definitive. Yeah. That is hopeless, at least in this life. Maybe I shouldn't take it. Maybe well, you never back. know that either. That's yeah. right. Maybe in the next life you'll have another shot. And you're either going to say, oh great, or oh my god. Yeah. But can something be close to hopeless? Of course. Yes. There are situations that can be very close to hopeless, like if your ex gets married or has kids with somebody else, I would never encourage you to hold on in any situation like no. that. Oh, no. And it's, I, I can't say it's 100%, like I said, unless they die, but it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty remote and rare that somebody could move on, get engaged or married, and then come back. Now, maybe 10 years later, but never put your life on hold. No, no. No, 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 no. Definitely no, not. Never put your life on hold for anything beyond a reasonable period of time. <laughs> but there are a lot of different factors in a relationship. And today I've got a really bizarre relationship. Yes. And there's a lot of factors in here that, you know, they ask me, is it hopeless? And what is the possibility of their ex coming back? 
Well, let's, let's run through this scenario because okay. there is a lot here. Okay? So this couple is very close in age, let's just say early 50s. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, they dated in high school many, many years ago. And they were together again starting back in 2007. They started dating again. But here's the thing. They were both married. Uh -huh. so, and they re-encountered each other. They were both married, they re-encountered each other, and they wound up having an affair for, was it eight years? Eight or nine, right. Eight or nine years. And so, he's cheating on his wife, she's cheating on her husband, yeah. and they are, well, you're going to see. There's a lot going on here, okay? So, I'm going to go right to his story. He had given me some background info. Um, but I'm just going to get to his story and I'll go back to that if I need be, okay? He says, I want to say that you are an amazing person with tremendous insight and pearls of wisdom that's helped me get through some pretty dark moments and I thank you. They said, hi coach, I want to say you're an amazing person with tremendous insight and pearls of wisdom that helped me get through some pretty dark moments and I thank you. Having worked in television and film, I'd like to discuss creating a TV show around you, but that's another conversation. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, there's quite a bit of interest for that. Yes. We'll see. Uh, here's my story. Uh, back in, let's say, the early 80s, I met my ex, but we broke up after about five years. We stayed in touch because we had a very strong bond. We met again in 2007. We were both in unhappy marriages. My wife was abusive while Becky found her husband repulsive oh my. and not a man. Gracious. Ouch. We had an affair from 2008 until we both got divorced from our partners in 2016. So they had an that was eight, a long time. eight year affair. And probably in some weird way it enabled them to stay in the relationships they were already in. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. We had an amazing, passionate, and fulfilling relationship. Pure magic. And in many ways, pure fantasy in my book. Absolutely. When the rest of their lives was falling apart. Mm hmm Yeah. We started dating officially in August of 2016. In March of 2017, I was to move in when my dad and my bo boss both passed away within days. Becky had a surgery that month and I couldn't be there every day for her recovery. It was a cosmetic surgery, nothing like life threatening. Okay. Because of obligations at work and my son's worsening depression. Oh dear. She felt I abandoned her in her time of need and dumped me. Oh my, after all this time, wow. And it's interesting because the surgery, like I said, it was very cosmetic. And she said, I'm going to look so good after this, I don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. And she said, we soon met up. Or, we say made up, sorry. In June, job stress hit her and she got detached. I got anxious, she dumped me. Now this is two breakups. This is twice. Yeah. Now, Remember, they hadn't even been dating again officially that long. He said, I then discovered attachment styles. Ah. We soon made up. In October of last year, I moved in. Everything was awesome. Even our kids began bonding. In November, she received a job offer. Stress hit while deciding to take it or not. She went cold and detached. After a few weeks, I approached her and asked her to talk. She gave me a whole seven minutes. So he's trying to talk to her about what's going on. Yeah. Seven she minutes. says, you have seven minutes. She said, I don't bring her peace when she's stressed. I'm too helpful. I'm too helpful. So he hovers, is that it? He hovers over her? Probably. I'm I, stressed and he's there. Can I do the dishes? Can I... I suspect he's got an anxious attachment style and always yes, trying to please. Absolutely. Yeah. Which would probably... Make uh, her nuts. Yeah. He was too hyper and she likes the home quiet and peaceful. 
She always says... Her history would not say that. <laughs> but who am I? Yeah. She always says she doesn't need help. She'd rather depend on herself. Okay. And to I me, need some space. To me, it seems like she has an avoidant attachment yeah. style. And that seems like something an avoidant would say. And his is anxious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I promise to be calmer and not do any chores unless asked. There are people who trade places with her, let me tell you. But, okay. it, yeah, the thing is, it's not about the chores. Right, yeah. It's about his general attitude yeah. in trying to please her. And fussing over her, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it wasn't because of the chores. It, that was just an excuse. Right. Mid-December, she was still distant and non-communicative. I felt unwelcome and uncomfortable. My presence was clearly aggravating her. So, I wanted to give her space. I told her how I felt that I would stay at my sister's for a few days so she could clear her head. I stayed in contact via text, but her replies were short, cold, and took forever. Not a good sign, huh? No, I was going to say, no. <clears throat> I suggested a date night for some fun. She said she was too busy. A few days later, I asked her to get together to talk. Again, she said she's too busy. I stayed at my sister's another week, gently mentioning getting together to talk and clear the air. I wanted to come home. It was like talking to a robot. She coldly stated, this relationship isn't working for me, and dumped me. For the third time that I recall. Maybe more. Yeah. I didn't argue. I simply left. We texted the next day. I asked her to reconsider. She wasn't interested. I went no contact. Mid-January, she asked me to pick up my stuff because her ex-husband needed a place to stay temporarily. Oh, how convenient. Hmm. Getting some more pieces of the puzzle here, aren't we? Oh my lord. And she had been unhappy with him and, and dating cheated this, on him yeah. for eight years yeah. with him. And now he's moving back in and she's breaking up with this guy. Mm-hmm. All right. How, I, how, <laughs> how's your decision making skills, honey? <laughs> yeah. I just heard yesterday from a friend that she's working things out with him and is really happy and at peace now. Gee, it didn't take long, did it? Nope. They're supposedly planning to see a counselor. Good idea. No, not him with her. Her and the ex-husband. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. <laughs> they luck. should all go in together. Good luck. To His ex-wife, him, yeah. her, and the... Yeah. Boy, the, the, the and, and the counselor and needs husband. to see boundaries and then throw them out one by one. Yeah, okay. She even mentioned possibly getting remarried. How long has this gone on now? How long has she been with the... She just, he just moved in like a month ago. Because he needed a place to stay. Oh, it, it, he says it right here. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, it's only been about a month. Okay. Okay. I called her and asked if it were true. She denied it, claiming he's there temporarily until he saves for a new apartment. WTF. <laughs> yes, we might say the same thing. Yeah. Why did she lie about them getting back together? Well, I don't think it's the lie that you believe. I don't think the lie is that she is telling you they're not back together. Okay? That's right. the lie. That's the lie. It's not that she's lying to her friend or your friend about the situation. She's lying to you about the situation. She's obviously now back with her ex-husband, and I'm willing to bet she lined him up. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to bet she was talking to him all along while she was being cold with you. And that's I why agree. you're yes. being cold, she was being cold with you. It's because she knew she wanted you gone. She wanted to work it out with her ex again. She had an eight-year affair on with you. Well, but, I mean, nobody's been able to make a decision here. I mean, she's been from one of them to the other for a very long time. Mm -hmm. She said, we're done for good. Is there any hope of us being reunited? 
Oh Lord, no! And could any would anybody have the energy left to do another round? It's exhausting. Yes, just reading it is exhausting. Can you imagine living it? I mean, here's the thing: could she come back again? She could. Yeah. It could fall apart with and, the ex-husband again. And the again. whole thing could replay over again. Yeah. But here's the thing: this woman has not shown in any capacity ability right. to have a healthy one-on-one -on -one relationship. She has for years now sort of had two going at the same time so that neither one gets all that intimate would be my guess that's right she has and splitting in an unusual form yeah. yeah because she couldn't do a relationship one-on-one -on -one with him she cheated on him for eight years now she's with you that hardly lasted at all because the fantasy the relationship she thought she was going to really have with you when it was one-on-one -on -one didn't match up with her fantasy right and now, she lined up the ex again. He was probably trying to get her back. She decided to go and give him another shot, lies to you about it, hides it from you, it got back to you, and now she's with that guy again. That's right. It's like watching a tennis match. Yeah. But. No, sir, go on with your life. Yeah, this has been destroying your life for yeah. many, many years. Right. You thought it was going to be something, and that's why you're so invested in this still, is because you spent eight years thinking that she was going to be this fantasy woman, but the reality is when you were doing one-on-one, -on -one, she couldn't do it. No, and I think that's the issue, that the, the sort of two at a time worked for everybody for a period of time. and. Occasionally, someone would have an attack of health and say, wait a minute, this isn't working. Yeah. And what could happen is it'll start to fall apart with this guy again. Then she'll bring him back around, but only as another affair again. Yeah, he needs to not do this again. Yeah. It was he who wrote to you, right? Yes. Oh, please, sir, move on. Yes. Yeah. So the likelihood of her coming back, probably fairly strong. And even if she, well, if she does... The likelihood of it lasting is... That's where I was going to go. Yeah. The likelihood of this being a healthy relationship, probably very, very slim. Unfortunately, um, you know, you have put yourself in a position here where you've invested in somebody that you thought could do a long-term relationship. She and can't. can't. And can't. I mean... And I don't think any of them can, whatever their various attachment styles are. You, you should have thought to yourself... He got healthier first. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But you should have thought to yourself, this woman is cheating on her husband for eight years, and you're cheating on your wife, wife. For, for eight, eight years. years. How could you think that anything good was going to come out of this? It was, it was really wrong for you to do this to your wife. And some people would say you're going to get karma for that, and maybe that this is what it is. It but, sounds like nobody was really able to stand back and look at the situation. It sounds like everybody was so sort of caught up in it that... Yeah. yeah. You, you ignored massive red flags for how you felt. Right. You ignored how you were hurting people for how you felt. And when it was going well, it sounds like it was going well. Right. I mean... Here's the thing that I don't understand. You say your ex-wife was abusive. Why didn't you just end that relationship and move forward? Why, why continue to try and have... Why, why do it for so long? Right. You know? It just... It was so unhealthy. So the likelihood of any kind of healthy, stable relationship coming out of this... Impossible. Or pretty close to it. Pretty close to it. Yeah. Not unless she really said, I'm going to get help. I want to work it out with you, but I mean, she, now she's saying she's going to go to a counselor with this other guy. Yeah. Yeah. So no relationship, no boundaries have ever been established. No relationship has ever been truly embraced or truly ended. Yeah. Yeah. How sad. Yeah. And a boundary, we talked about boundaries earlier today. This is a boundary horror. No one had any. Yeah, this is a really, really... There should be a boundary around a family, a, around a relationship, and it was sort of, we hopped from one place to the other. Yeah, and I think she has got a avoidant attachment style. She's not going to be able to give you a loving, committed yeah. relationship. She's not going to be able to give it to the ex-husband again either. 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 That's yeah. not going to happen, so don't fantasize that it's going to be so great for him, because right. he'll 
you know, be a terrible husband again mm -hmm. and not a man again, as again. she called him before, yeah. in, in the matter of no time. And there are children here um, who must think they're living on a merry-go-round that isn't so merry. And you got to remember, exactly, the kids are involved here. And she was most likely talking to this guy behind your back. Why wouldn't she? She did it to him for eight years. Why yeah. would she not do that to you? to you? Right. Got to think about these things. These poor kids. They said they were starting to relate with each other. My goodness. Very sad situation. Very sad situation. Nobody, no happy ending here. No, I don't think so either. Unless I think that, it's her with the husband, but I doubt it. If I was in this situation, I'd definitely tell you to move on. Yeah. And you do need to explore why you would want to be with somebody who treated you like this or treats other people like this because she treated him terribly too. Yes, she did. So, you know, you got to remember what somebody does to you, they'll do to other people. And what other, you know, what they'll do to other people, they'll do to you. Yeah, that's true. No, no winners here. No, unfortunately not. Yeah. So, if you want to get my help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Yes, don't forget me. I'm on there now. That's right. Just click on Margaret at the top of the webpage and you can sign up with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. If you would like professional help with your situation, please contact us at askcraig.net.